I'm really, really pleased to be here today. Um, I'm talking about something that is absolutely horrific. It is a very tough talk to listen to, but please stay with me because at the end, I'm gonna go through and talk about uh, the fact that we have a lot of hope because there's a lot of things that we can do. We can really make things much, much better for the innocent victims that are being affected by, by plastics, like this poor bird, this poor stork. Thank you, Jim. Um, this poor stork has to live its life looking through a plastic bag. So anyway, um, so, but if you'll just stick with me and I'll talk to you about the, the good things that we can do about plastics, because there are a lot of things, but it is a horrific story. So let me talk a little bit about what I'm gonna be talking to you about tonight. <laughs> My husband is trying to get our dog. Um, I'm gonna talk first about the facts about plastics so that we understand what actually has happened. Then I'm gonna to talk to you about how wildlife is being affected by plastics. And you can see it in this, this photograph here, how this poor whale is having to live its life with all of these things tied around it. And that's all plastic stuff too. Um, and then I'm gonna to talk to you about what we all must do. And there's a lot of things that we can do. Now this horror story started back in 1907 and Leo Bakelin was the first person to actually fully synthesize the plastic polymer. And he invented a thing called Bakelite. And it took about 40 years, but after about 40 years, we had quite a bit of plastic. So by 1950, we had two tons of plastic, two million, sorry, two million tons of plastic being produced. And you can see as you go up by each decade, it's going higher and higher and higher and higher and higher and higher. Um, in 2020, we had 435 million tons of plastic produced in the world. That's a lot of plastic. And now what they're projecting is for 2050, we are gonna have 1,750 million tons of plastic being produced. Holy mackerel. That's a lot of plastic. And I hope, I hope, I hope that that's, that statistic is actually wrong. We won't go that high and I'll explain to you why. So since 1907, we have actually created 9.2 billion tons of plastic. Since 1907, 9.2 billion tons. I have a hard time with big, big numbers like that. 9.2 billion tons. How much is 9.2 billion tons? Well, it's equivalent in weight to 25,000 Empire State Buildings. That's how much plastic we have produced over the years since 1907 when it was first discovered. 7 billion of that 9.2 billion is now waste. And that actually is, is probably a low number. Um, and that then is equivalent to 19,000 Empire State Buildings has been made into waste. And we have to understand plastic never disappears. Plastic is always around, it doesn't biodegrade. All it does is it breaks up and gets smaller and smaller and smaller. The only portions of plastic that we don't have anymore are the portions of the plastic that have been incinerated. And incineration is not a good idea. It causes a lot of pollution, a lot of harmful chemicals are released into the air. Now, the thing that is, is true about plastic is plastic comes from oil. And 6% of the world's oil production is used to make plastic, 6%. That's a very large percentage. And for one pound of plastic that is made, six pounds of CO2, which is a gas, so it doesn't weigh very much, but six pounds of CO2 goes up into the atmosphere. So if we have 9 billion tons since 1907, that means of plastic, that means we have 55.2 billion tons of CO2 going up into our atmosphere. 
oh my gosh, that's a lot. That's a lot of CO2 going into the atmosphere. Okay, let's talk about this 9.2 billion tons of plastic that has ever been made. 30% is still in use. Now that's a misnomer because when it says it's still in use, we're talking about things that were probably put together in maybe 1960, and we're assuming that that's still in use. So we have a lot of plastic in cars. So that's considered to be still in use, but many of those cars aren't still in use. So it really is a misnomer. There really isn't 30% still in use. But anyway, what, what this really is talking about is 30% of the plastic that has ever been made has been made into something that was more than single use. So it was made for, for cars, for also, you, you, you know all the different things that plastic has been made for that's not single use. 8% has been incinerated. And that is really quite problematic because of all of the toxic chemicals that are put up into the atmosphere because of the incineration. Um, not, it's not good. 9% uh, has been recycled. People are always telling me, Terry, we don't need to worry about climate, uh, about plastics, because when we're, we're having plastics, I make sure that I recycle it all. Well, most of the recycling that you and I put into our recycling bins goes into the landfill. Only 9% of the plastic has ever been recycled. And 53% is in landfills or in the oceans. So that's what I want to talk to you about today, is this huge amount of plastic that is in our landfills and in our oceans. Now, eight states have banned plastic bags. That's really good. So here are the eight states, and then there's also Washington, D.C. has actually banned, you know, I. I'm this, I just remade this slide and I'm wrong. It's 10 states. I'm sorry, there's a mistake on that. It's 10 states have actually banned plastic bags and you can see them up there. Um, New Jersey and Washington just came on board and I just remade this slide and I didn't change the eight, I apologize. But anyway, it's eight states. But guess what Florida has? Florida has banned the banning of plastic bags. We cannot ban plastic bags in Florida. Coral Gables, the city, Coral Gables, took this all the way to the Florida Supreme Court saying they had a right to say that they were banning plastic bags. And they weren't, they lost. They lost in the Florida um, Supreme Court. So here in Florida, we cannot ban the ban, ban. <laughs> We cannot ban plastic bags at all. Now, there are 17 other states that have banned the banning of plastic bags, and you can see them all here. But there are also some cities, Boston has banned plastic bags, Chicago has banned plastic bags, Colorado has banned the banning of plastic bags, but Boulder, Colorado has succeeded in banning plastic bags in some manner. And there is a county in Maryland, uh, Montgomery County, that has banned plastic bags. Um, but this is what we need to all do throughout America. We need to ban plastic bags. And in Florida, we certainly do because we're right along the ocean and so many plastic bags go into the ocean. And the ocean is full of plastic bags. So now, shoppers worldwide use about 5,000 billion single-use plastic bags a year. That's a staggering, staggering, staggering number. About 5,000 billion single-use plastic bags. About 9 million plastic bags are used each minute worldwide. And annually, about 625 plastic bags are used per person worldwide. That's more than two a day almost. That's a lot of plastic bags. We are really, really, really producing a lot of plastic bags that are completely useless after they've been used once. 
Now, Ireland was smart and came up and had put a 15 cent tax on plastic bags. And as soon as they put the tax on, the usage of plastic bags dropped by 90%. Now, the average annual plastic bag usage in the US, just the US, per person is 365. Basically, we all use one plastic bag a year. So that means if you multiply by how many people are in the US, that is about 122 billion bags per year. That's a lot of bags that are going into the landfill. It's ridiculous. We don't need to do that. We truly, truly don't. 122 billion bags a year going into the landfills. Ridiculous. Now, the average annual plastic bag usage in Denmark per person. Now, I haven't put a picture up there yet, but I want you all to think, what do you think the number is in Denmark? And I bet some of you will guess, but it's four. So here is a developed country. They have learned how to not use plastic bags. They use, on average, four bags per person a year. And on average in the US, it's 365. There's something wrong here. Denmark knows what they're doing. So the total number for Denmark uses is 23.2 million bags. That's still a lot of bags, but it's a lot less than what we're doing here in America. Now let's go back to America. America purchased 346 plastic bottles per person in 2015. I'm sorry, these are old data, but that's as, as new the data as I could find. Now of that, 32 bottles were recycled. So that's 9%, 32 bottles were recycled. Of those 32 bottles that we recycled, almost uh, seven of them, uh, only 2% are actually in use. So the 9% gets recycled, but then when the recyclers are taking the bottles and making things into them, like make, taking, um, I, my husband and I have t-shirts that are made out of recycled bottles, things like that. They can't use all the bottles that they get, so they actually end up having to throw them away. So what really is used is 2% of the bottles that we have recycled, not really 9%. 9% is a very low number. Two is a minuscule number, but that's what is actually used. The rest goes in landfills. So the worst plastic by far is single use plastic. That includes plastic bags, plastic straws, plastic battle, bottles, and plastic wrap. All of those are single use and we don't need to use them. All of us that are listening to this can do something about that and not use any of these. Now, the other thing that is of concern is microfibers. Nylon was discovered in 1939. By 1941, nylon was being used in World War II to make um, parachutes and tents and things like this, and it has just gone skyrocketing since. Microfibers are now out in the oceans, ex extensively in the oceans. That I could give a whole talk just on microfibers. Microfibers is a very, very, very bad thing. Um, and, and it comes from things like polyester and nylon and rayon, things like that. Um, but they're, they're very, very, very bad too because they're floating in the oceans. And I'll talk about that in a, in a minute. So this is what happens to plastic. So you have a plastic bag, you have a plastic bottle, you have plastic wrap, or plastic straw, it breaks down and it breaks down and it breaks down and it breaks down and it becomes microplastics eventually. But eight, about 8.8 .8 million tons of plastic are dumped in the ocean every single year. Holy mackerel, 8.8 .8 million tons are dumped into the ocean. 
So let's go back to my Empire State Building because that, that helps me understand what this big number of 8.8 .8 million tons actually is. Let's assume that we had 8.8 .8 million tons of Lego bricks. I have grand nieces and grand nephews that absolutely love Lego bricks. They will do anything for Lego bricks. Well, if we had 8.8 .8 million tons of Lego bricks, we could build 19, 19 life-size Empire State buildings and have some Lego bricks left over. That's how much, how much plastic is going into the ocean every single year. That's a lot of plastics. Our oceans can't survive this. It just can't. Now, where in the oceans is this? We have five gyres in the ocean currents, and a gyre just says that it just is, is making a kind of like a circle. Here you can see the Southern Pacific gyre here um, that I'm using my cursor on. The Northern Pacific gyre that is up above that is the big one. Um, and that is because it's coming from the United States and it's coming from Asia and to some extent, but not much from Australia. Um, but this is where the big area is. Um, this Northern gyre covers 600,000 square miles. That's the size of Alaska and South Carolina put together. Or if you wanna think about it a different way, take six Colorados and that makes up how big the gyre is in the North Pacific. So this North Pacific gyre is huge. The other four, there are four other gyres here. They do have plastics in them, but not nearly as many as, as in the North Pacific gyre. Microplastics, again, this is plastics that have been broken down and broken down and broken down, have been found in the Antarctic sea ice. Holy mackerel, all the way to the bottom of the, ocean, of, of the earth. And they've actually been discovered near the summit of Mount Everest in 2020. So microplastics are getting around everywhere. Plastics are everywhere. That's basically what the bottom line is. And here we have a, a cartoon, free hammocks all over the town. It's like a miracle. We have to remember what has ha happened with the pandemic and the pandemic has made things a lot worse. This is um, a collection of masts that were found on the shore, a uh, very, very small area shore um, that this man had collected. Now, the thing with plastics is, is that Plastics have a lot of chemicals in them that are very toxic to us. Um, we have uh, a lot of plastics that have gotten rid of some of those toxins. And, um, but now they're finding that the, that the chemicals that they use to replace the bad things with are almost just as bad for us. So plastics in general, if you ingest them, are very bad. The other thing that happens with plastics is they act like a sponge and they actually will absorb other chemicals. So they're absorbing DDT, DDE, C C PCBs, on and on. I don't want to read the list, but there's a lot of things that the, that the uh, plastic can have in with them. But the plastics themselves have a lot of bad chemicals also. So we're getting a double whammy when they are ingested. And in North America, the infants are being exposed to about 1 million microplastic particles a day is what the new estimate is. This is, this is very recent data. Um, it's coming from polypropylene baby bottles um, that are releasing all of this. You have to be very careful what kind of bottle you're using, what kind of cap you're using, and what kind of nipple you are actually using, um, because all of them will be releasing microplastics. And now microplastics, there's a brand new study that just came out in January. There are microplastics that are being found in fetuses and placentas. Um, so they looked at 
six different placentas and found them in four. And they only looked in very rudimentary places. So they think if they had looked harder, they may have found more, but, but the studies now, as I said, they're brand new studies, um, they're ongoing. And basically all of us, each one of us consumes about one credit card worth of plastic per week. We're consuming one credit card's worth of plastic a week. That's a lot of plastic going into us. And some of that plastic is very toxic. They have found plastics in plastic microparticles in livers and in kidneys. This is just an example. So it, it is there. So now where are we getting all of this microplastics, microplastics from? Well, there was a study that was done on sea salt and they collected sea salt from all over the United States and they tested it to see if it had microplastics in it. And they didn't have to do any statistics on it at all because 100% of the sea salt that they tested from all over the US had microplastics in it. I had a woman who said, that can't be true. I, I buy very, very expensive sea salt. And I said, well, it is true. And she said, I just don't believe you. About four days after my talk, I got an email from her and she said, you made me so mad, I went home and I put my salt in a, in a bowl and I put water in it and I melted all the salt and I looked down and yeah, you're right. There were microplastics at the bottom of the bowl after all the salt had melted away. So from now on, please, 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 no more sea salt. It is really, really bad for you. So you don't want to get the microplastics in it. Another place that we're getting plastics is you need to avoid these very expensive tea bags, PET tea bags. You put them in hot water and all the chemicals from the plastics come out and the microplastics come out. So literally it says in the study, it said literally billions of microplastic particles come out from these tea bags. So don't use nylon tea bags. And this brings up the fact that we have to worry about micro, um, microfibers. And the microfibers are floating around in the ocean and where they come from is from our, our washing machines. When we dry clothes, we actually have lint traps and we trap the lint. In our washing machines, we don't have those traps. And so when we're washing, all of that, those microfibers go out into the water stream and that gets out into our oceans. And we have got micro, um, uh, microfibers floating around in the oceans. Um, they're actually more numerous than the microplastic particles are. And so that means we need to all be thinking twice about eating filter feeders, things like oysters, clams, sardines, things like that that are filter that are filter feeders, they are getting these microfibers into their bodies. When we eat them, they are coming into our bodies and that is not a good thing to have happen. And then we have to also talk about the, the fishing equipment that is lost or abandoned um, annually. There's 640,000 tons of it. And our wildlife gets, gets caught up in it. Um, we've got to find a better way to regulate so that there is no lost equipment or abandoned equipment. There is good news. There are um, enzymes out there that can actually eat plastics. Um, I don't know how good this is. I tried to follow up on this study and I couldn't find any follow up. So this is all I know about it at the time. So now let's talk specifically about wildlife and plastics. There are five different marine animals that are affected the most. First are sea turtles, sea, seals and sea lions, seabirds, fish, 
and cetaceans, the whales and the dolphins. Now, you may see the difference here, but a turtle doesn't. So a turtle will see a plastic bag floating in the ocean, and there are billions of them floating in the ocean. And what do they do? They ingest them. So it is assumed that at least 50% of all sea turtles have ingested plastics, mainly from plastic bags. 15% of loggerhead sea turtle young die due to ingesting plastic. The loggerhead sea turtle is an endangered species. We can't afford to lose 15% of the young due to plastics. They're gonna go extinct. That's not, that's not a, an if, it's, it's probably a when they will go extinct. Here we have seals getting tangled in fishing um, nets. Seals are very, very playful. Actually, this is a sea lion. Um, they're very playful, they like to play with things, and then it gets stuck around their neck. And now this poor sea lion is gonna to have to live the rest of its life like that, unless a human can come along and help cut it off. And that's a hard thing to do. And you can see how a lot of these, these circular things have gotten around these lion's nicks, and their skin has grown over them. It's very, very painful. They can chafe, they can bleed, that can cause infection, which can cause death. It's estimated that 90%, 90% of all seabirds have eaten plastic. And we know that 98% of the albatrosses that have been studied have actually ingested plastic. And Chris Jordan, who is a, a, a videographer, went to Midway to actually, Midway Island, to actually film the albatrosses and, and their having their reproduction, having their chicks. He didn't expect to find this all over that island. This is a carcass of a young albatross. The parent has been dutifully feeding it plastics. So that's, the chick has died a very, very, very painful death of starvation, even though the parents have been very, very careful about feeding it, they just didn't realize they were feeding it plastic. And it has killed, killed the chick. And now these chicks have littered the area around um, Midway Island. And if you have a chance, I know it sounds very gruesome, but it's a very beautiful, movie, um, Chris's movie, Chris Jordan's movie, Midway, Message from the Gyre, is a very powerful and very, very beautiful movie. Um, I recommend it to you if you can find it. And we really have to be concerned about albatrosses because albatross populations are dropping. They're plummeting in abundance. And I'm sure that there are going to be, I'm 66 years old. No, I'm not. I'm 67 years old. I am sure there are gonna be extinctions of albatrosses um, before I die, unless I get hit by a semi-truck tomorrow. Um, albatrosses are not doing well. And what's happening is they are feeding their chicks the plastics, they are feeding themselves the plastics and they are dying. Now, as far as fish go, 12,000 to 24,000 tons of plastic is ingested by fish just in the North Pacific each year. Here's a, an, a poor fish that has again gotten trapped by one of these circular things and it's gonna have to live its life with a circular band around it. Two thirds of our fish stocks have plastics in them. That prompted this comic, this uh, cartoon. May I have a plastic bag already inside? I wish it were funny. If it weren't true, it would be funny. Um, now about cetaceans. 100% of the sperm whales, whales that have been necropsied, um, that's the term that they use for, we use auto aut autopsies um, because we're doing it on ourselves, on, on humans. A human dissecting a human is an a autopsy. A human dissecting another species as a necropsy, 
but 100% of the sperm whales that have been necropsied have plastic bags in their stomachs. And I think it was last year or the year before that, a beautiful male sperm whale uh, washed up on the shore somewhere in Europe, um, Ireland, I think, I don't remember where. Um, and it had 220 pounds of plastic bags in its stomach. That's a lot of plastic bags to have been eating and thinking that it was getting nutrients and it's not. This is from the Clearwater Aquarium. The, um, the dolphins in the Gulf of Tam Tampa Gulf, Tampa Bay Gulf, Tampa Bay um, have been studied for 40 years. And this is a young dolphin. And the mother knew that the, the young dolphin was in trouble. So it came to, it brought the baby to the aquarium and waited until it saw somebody that it knew. It started making a ruckus. That person went out, looked at what was going on. They put up a boundary to keep the mother, here's the boundary, the net in the back, keep the mother and the baby in the area. So some um, people went out and held the mom. They took the baby and untangled the baby and released the baby. So there are success stories like this, not many, but there are success stories like this. Now, there are also animals that are being affected that are not marine animals. This is a coastal animal. This is a black oyster catcher that got plastic on its bill and it could no longer feed. So it too starved. And those damn stupid six pack holders, we gotta do something about. Here's a turtle got stuck in one of these and it has been able to live its life. It has an hourglass figure now. Um, but anyway, it couldn't break through this and it had to live its life that way. That's a hard thing to do. So anytime, please, anytime you have something that is circular, each one of these, each one of these holes, this one, the little one, the big one, the one that holds the can, all of them need to be cut open before you throw anything away. Anything that is circular, please cut it open. This is of a wolf in um, India and they don't have guns to dart things with and put them down so that they can put them to sleep and then take care of them. But this, there's a, this is a success story. This was a wolf that was in India. It was so weak from not being able to eat um, that a bunch of rangers went in and tackled it, literally tackled it, and pulled the, the jar off of its head, released it, had no idea if it was strong enough to eat, but it was strong enough to eat, and they did later find it that it was still surviving. So there are surviving cases. But even on land, we have animals that are being hurt by plastics. And then again, this tangling that goes on. Okay, so now what we all must do. This is an unsung hero, Byron Slot. When he was in high school, he was 16 years old. He went scuba diving with his parents around the Greek islands. And he was horrified by the fact that he saw more plastic than he saw fish. And he decided at 16 years old, he was going to do something about it. And he did. By the time he was 18, he developed this boom, this thing that he has in his hand. Um, it actually is much bigger that, than that in life. But what happens is he puts it on an anchor, a parachute anchor. And here is this boom here. And then the current is coming in the direction, as you can see, it goes from left to right. And it is actually trapping the plastic up on top. Then ships can go in and pull this plastic out and redeploy this again. And it has been used time and time again. At first it had problems, now it, is, it seems to be working. The only trouble is it only works for the plastic that is floating. It is not working for the plastics that are already in the water column. We've got to do something about that. So if you have a bright student that can think of something to do about that, encourage them. Okay, 
So now let's talk about what you and I can do. No plastic shopping bags ever, 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 ever again should touch your hand. It's easy to do. You can use cloth bags. If you have to, you can use paper, but please try to use cloth bags. It's easy to do. You might forget them in your car. My husband, my husband had a hard time remembering to take his bags in and he'd be halfway through shopping and he'd say, oh, nuts. I forgot the bags in the car and he went out and got them. He says it only took three times for him to finally train himself that every time he goes to the grocery store, he he's first stops, gets the, plat, the um, cloth bags out of the trunk and goes into the grocery store. No plastic fruit or veggie bags, the produce bags that are around um, that, that you put all of your apples in or that you put something else in, you don't need to use their plastic bags. You can use cloth bags, small cloth bags you can buy specifically for that, or you can reuse the same plastic bag over and over and over again. That's actually what I do. I don't have cloth bags for this. I just have, have used the same plastic bag over and over and over. So when I put my cloth bags in the car, I put my plastic, the plastic bags that carry the fruit and produce inside the cloth bags. And so when I get to the store, I will have my own bag and I will not use their plastic bags. It's still using plastic bags, but it's using it over and over and over again. No plastic drinking bottles. There is absolutely no reason that we, any of us, should be drinking water out of plastic bottles. Actually, <laughs> they did a study and 93% of the water in plastic bottles had microplastics in them. So for that reason, don't use don't use plastic bottles. You don't need to. It's easy. You can use metal reusable bottles and you can fill them up at drinking fountains or at sinks. They're easy to do, just do it. No other types of plastic bottles. You have a choice. You don't need to buy milk in a plastic bottle or orange juice in a plastic bottle or even Tide or OxyClean in a plastic bottle. So you can use orange juice and milk in paper cartons. You can do that. Um, and you don't need to use detergent bottles at all. You can use a thing that comes from True Earth. You can order it from Amazon if you want, uh, want to. It is actually sheets of detergent. And I use it all the time. It comes in a probably six inches by eight inch envelope and there are sheets of uh, detergent. And I, you just tear one off and you put it in. For OxyClean, you can use boxes. You can use the old fashioned boxes. They still exist. You just have to use them. I get mine at Costco. No straws. We all can do this. It's easy to do. We just have to remember. You have to tell your server when you first get sit down, please no straws. Um, you can use your own straw if you want to. I just don't use straws anymore at all. No plastic wrap. We don't have to use plastic wrap. There's all sorts of other things to do. You can use silicone bags, you can use dish covers, and you can use waxed cloth. So here's an example of the silicone bags. You can get them at Target. I, I personally love, this is called a zip top. It's made out of silicone. I can put it in the oven. I can put it in the freezer. I can wash it easily. It opens up nicely. They're fabulous. Um, I don't like these as well because they're a little bit harder to open, uh, but they're smaller and you can take them for lunch and that, that might work better for you. But you can have dish covers. If you don't want this kind of dish cover, you can buy dish covers at Publix. I just saw one at Publix. They are made out of plastic, but the point is, is you use them for years. So you use them over and over. 
I actually have cloth ones that are made out of polished cotton and they're easy to keep clean. They are wonderful. Here's a silicone um, top that you actually put on pans. I personally don't like these because it takes up so much room in the, in the refrigerator. I don't, I don't use those. What I do use a lot of is wax cloth. And these are pieces of cloth that have wax in it, beeswax in them. And when they're um, not super cold, you just fold it over and it clings to the bowl itself. It's wonderful. Now, the only problem is, is that when it's cold, it doesn't work. So if I have one that's cold and I wanna put it back on the bowl, I just put it in the microwave. I nuke it for literally three seconds. It warms it up enough. I can put it back on. It works wonderfully. I got the ones that I have from a company called ETTE, -E -E -E. um, if you go to, if you have someone who go, goes to Trader Joe's, Trader Joe's has them. I'm sure there are others. Um, they're sold through, let's see, uh, National Wildlife Federation. That's where I got this picture from, was the National Wildlife Federation. They sell them. Something that is an absolute no-no, no more styrofoam, no more styrofoam, anything, no cups, no plates, no egg cartons, meat, meat cartons, doggy bag containers. The styrofoam is absolutely god awful. So you can just choose other forms of cups, other forms of plates. You can get other kinds of egg cartons. They don't have to be plastic. They don't have to be styrofoam. They can be made out of paper. We can all do this. When you go to buy meat, make sure you turn it over and make sure you're not buying something in styrofoam. At Costco, they sell their uh, wild caught salmon on styrofoam containers. And so I just cannot buy my, oh, my wild caught salmon at Costco because of the container that they're in. And when you go out to eat, you know what? You can take your own doggy bags. It's a pain, but you can do it. You really can. No one use plastic sandwich bags. The zip top bags, don't use it just once. Wash it out and use it time and time again, or better yet, use wax paper bags or these, again, these resealable, resealable and reusable uh, silicone bags. They work beautifully. Now, microfibers. Microfibers are a real problem and they come off of dryer sheets. And so try, please don't use microfiber dryer sheets. Myers, Mrs. Myers sells paper. See, paper sheets. They work beautifully. I love them. But then my uh, stepson turned me on to using dryer balls, and they're fabulous. So you use wool dryer balls. You can get them um, online easily. Again, trade. I know you don't have Trader Joe's there, but um, Trader Joe's also sells them too. Um, they work perfectly, and that's what I use now all the time, our wool dryer balls dryer balls and they're fabulous. Now, the other thing is buy clothing and bedding that is made from cotton, linen, hemp, not microfibers such as nylon, rayon, and polyester. Because when you wash them, the microfibers go off into the oceans and we are swimming in microfibers. The other thing is, is wash items only as often as they need to be washed. Don't wash something just because it's, it's sitting somewhere and you just have forgotten about it. You really need to wash items only when they need to be washed. And it's, this is easy to do, we just have to do it. So here in Florida, it's much nicer to be dressed in cotton and linen and hemp rather than in nylon, rayon, or polyester, particularly in the summertime, for goodness sakes. So please, please try to wean yourself away from polyester. It really, polyester, rayon, and nylon, it, it can be done. Then the other thing too is cut anything circular, anything circular, cut it open. 
and this goes for the handles of dog of uh, garbage bags. This also goes for your ear loops on the masks that are disposable for that we're using right now. Anything that is circular, please cut it open. Because what we're doing is we're really harming the innocent victims out there. And this is an example of a poor seal that is being harmed by a circular something that it got around it. And you can see now here where it's bleeding and it could easily, very easily get infected and die. This one's lucky because it was helped by a human and that human now can cut this open and release it. But think of all the ones that are out there that can't be released. So we cause the problem, we can fix the problem. We just have to get off of our duffs and do it. So thank you very, very much for listening. Here's my information, um, how you can get in touch with me if you would like to. So I really do appreciate you sharing your evening with me. Let me stop sharing here. There we go, now I'm back. Thanks. A fantastic talk. I uh, just, you did such a great job. I'm so sorry we didn't have more people here, but I'm glad we're recording it because yep. we'll have it on our website and I'm glad you allowed us to do this because I just thought uh, it's great visuals. You have such a great thing, but it tells such a scary story too. And uh, it really makes me uh, really concerned in how we're ever gonna survive with all this plastic out there. And in Florida, it's, it's really terrible that we're banning the ban on, <laughs> on uh, plastic bags. Um, we need to work on that to get that changed. We need, to that. We, need, we, need, we need to work on our governor. You're right. <laughs> yeah, there's, a, there's probably a lot of things. Uh, do we have any uh, chats, uh, Bob? Uh, no questions yet, but Janet Alford wrote, great talk. Thank you, Terry, for your dedication to this. Oh, thank you, Janet. I appreciate that. That's very nice of you. I was wondering why the North Pacific, uh, gyra, do you call them the circles they're going? Mm -hmm. Why isn't it, why is it so bad there compared to uh, the uh, Atlantic? Um, it, you have to look at what, it, what countries are around it is what really does it. Um, the uh, Asian countries, Asia has really put out a lot of plastic probably um, two thirds to three fourths of the plastic in the gyre is coming from uh, Asia. Only about one third or one fourth of it is coming from the US. And the other gyres have um, uh, Europe and the US on it for the Atlantic. And they just don't have as many plastic bags and, and they don't have the culture of just throwing things on the land. They, they do something better with it. But we have to remember here in Florida that whatever goes into our um, landfills could very easily get back into the ocean as we have sea level rise going up. Um, when when uh, Greenland melts, there's about 29 feet of sea level rise in Greenland and that can melt probably by about uh, the year 2300. And all of, our, all of our landfills that are in that area, those areas are then gonna go off into the ocean too. So anyway, that's a concern. We've tried that, try a earth, uh, the, the soap was in the, the sheets sure. and uh, that works really well. Yeah, uh, it works. It works perfectly. And when when you when you have something that's really dirty, I just put in two sheets instead of one and it works beautifully. Yeah. And it's not very expensive. It's really it, it really is economical. Yeah, it's much easier, actually, than, <laughs> than using this open measuring it and putting it in. To, uh... Yeah, it, it's uh, true. We're starting to get some questions. Graham Cox is on the line if you'd want to talk to him. He's one of our board members. I, I don't know how to do that. Oh, Graham, go ahead. He's mute. Oh, there he goes. There we go. I picked it up. Uh, it's one of the ironies in this world. I was on Lake Titicaca in Bolivia. 
and the local folks who live on those rafts uh, depend upon plastic bottles to keep the, ra the raft alive or afloat, I should say. Uh, and it just struck me as ironic that here we are in a pretty remote place and they have to depend on plastic bottles. Right, right. So, so it really depends upon what's happening to the, to, to the bottles that are being used. Um, in, in very poor places, I was in Cameroon and the same thing, um, plastic bottles are seen as a, a real godsend because they can actually carry water in them. Um, so I really feel as though I'm talking to the developed countries, not the developing countries. Yeah, it's, it's just not fair for us to hold developing countries up to the same standard as we hold ourselves for, for plastics or for climate change. It's the same, same issue. Yeah, good, very good point, Graham, thank you. They, they also had microwave, uh, oh, sorry, they, they had uh, solar collectors on the roof of these. Oh, fabulous, <laughs> that's wonderful. Good. Thank you, uh, a wonderful talk, thank you. Thank you, Graham. So Terry, what do you suggest, how do we organize the world to make this thing happen as you know how can we come together to do that well i mean your voice is one voice but how can we raise many voices well i think what we need to do is we need to fight the battles that we can fight um and fighting the battles to ban plastic bags i think is a is a good one i think we could actually get um students to be advocates to try and demonstrate against Publix. I mean, I would be happy to be there in front of, front of Publix, demonstrating upon, in front of Publix saying, this is ridiculous. We can't, we can't ban it for, for our cities, but we can, ban, we can put pressure on, on different companies. Um, so that's one of the reasons that I, I actually spend a lot of my grocery bills at Trader Joe's. And that literally is one of the reasons is because they have, they do not have plastic bags. During the pandemic they did, and it really, really upset me. It really upset me a lot, but now they've gone back to, to just using um, paper. Um, but we can get different companies to do something about it. The other thing is, is that we've got to stop making people feel good by telling them that their recycling is going into recycling and not going into the landfills. Because um, I think people would realize that, you know, people, people think they're, they're doing something good by putting it into the recycle bin. And pretty much 99% of what I put in my recycle bin, even though it's washed out and cleaned and beautiful, is gonna go into the landfills. And I know that. Um, so having, having the, 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 the containers at Publix to recycle your plastic bags really, really makes me mad because it's, 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 it's false advertising. They are not recycling plastic bags. They're throwing them away or the um, styrofoam egg cartons and the styrofoam this and the styrofoam that, they are throwing them all away. Now, that being said, my cousin who lives in Kansas City, she got together a bunch of people and decided to collect all the plastic bags at their, it's not called Publix, but it was Kroger's or something like this. And they took them and cut them apart and knit and actually crocheted them into bed mattings, bed mats for homeless people. But it takes a charismatic leader to do something like that. And we don't have enough char charismatic leaders to do it. So, but we've got to get, we've got to get a paradigm shift and make people realize how bad this is. And I think if each of us would talk to five friends, I think it would make a difference. And those five friends talk to five friends. I really truly think it would make a difference. That's a good point. Uh, I, another thing that you brought to mind is that we do these field trips 
And the other day I had the opportunity to go up to the highest mountain in our county, which is our dump. <laughs> and uh, it is pretty amazing. It's the highest point in Indian River County. It, the smell at the top of it, you have a good view, but the smell is unbelievable. You really can't stay there very long. And you see so much plastic at the top of this mountain. I, I wish I, I've got some pictures and I should have displayed yeah. some more, but I'm, I think we'll set up a, a special tour instead of going to a lovely uh, place where you yeah. see birds and animals and things like that. And, is it will take people up and, and show them what's in our these garbage, the dump, uh, and maybe uh, where all this recycling. We have these recycling centers, you know, and it'd be interesting to see. There's rare birds there too. It, you actually, there are a lot of birds up on top. Of the, the place I saw my brown jay was in the Brownsville, Texas dump. So. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, we, we have a question from Nancy Duval. She asks, are the biodegradable plastic bags for real? Specifically, I think about all of us dog owners that pick up after our pets. I have a crazy, crazy story about this. I, I didn't know if they were real or not. And so what I did, Nancy, was I actually went and I ordered, I ordered some to see what was going to happen. And what I did was I ordered kitchen tall so I would use it for my kitchen and my kitchen garbage. Well, I didn't want to have to put, a, I, I didn't want to have somebody deliver two or three times. So I ordered a whole bunch of them so I wouldn't be putting so much CO2 in the atmosphere by having them delivered just once. So I went through my first, my first box and it worked beautifully, but it, was it biodegradable? I didn't know. Then I opened my second box and I pulled out one of those bags and it totally disintegrated in my hand. <laughs> and then I pulled out another bag and it totally disintegrated in my hand. It is exactly, they work beautifully. Um, and it, it's, um, it's a, the, the company that I, I got it from is called, um, excuse the French, but it's called Crap, Crap, scrappy crap or something scrappy crap it has crap in it somehow and scrappy in it somehow i don't know how it, how they go together but anyway and it and they work beautifully so i now i now get <laughs> i only get one box at a time and i i have it delivered um but it works and i do what i do for picking up my dog poop is um I'll use any plastic bags. Like I, I get um, frozen um, blueberries and they come in a plastic bag. So I rinse that out and I use that to pick up my dog poop too. So, but I do use um, biodegradable bags too, but I try to, to, I make most of my bread, but when we do buy bread, I, I'll use a bag, the bag from the, the bread to pick up my dog poop. So I try to try to use as little as I possibly can. And I actually just last night, because I was getting this talk ready, I was feeling guilty. I ordered um, shampoo and conditioner in a bar. It comes in a, in a bar. Instead of coming in a plastic bottle, it comes like a bar of soap. And I don't know if it's going to work or not. So I'll let you know in three months. <laughs> Well, we get our newspaper. Uh, some people, like we do, get them in a plastic bag. Sometimes it's a double plastic bag. And what can we do about that? We actually we went to. We 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 talked. We went to the um, the press that was actually putting it in the, into the plastic in the plastic bags, and we said, certainly you don't have to put them into plastic bags if they're going into a building. So. You know, you you go into one of these retirement homes, and at the at the door of all the people that get newspapers, those newspapers don't need to be in a plastic bag because it's not going to rain on them. So we got them to actually stop putting them in plastic bags for the people that were it was going inside. 
to get them to, to not put them in plastic bags to people who are going outside, we couldn't do it. It didn't work. But we saved a few plastic bags at least. I so. guess like you, if you collect your mail in a mailbox, you could have, a, have something for your newspaper too, I suppose. Yeah, you can, I guess. But I, I don't know if they'll do it or not. I don't know. We couldn't get them to do it. But that must be a that must be a lot of plastic bags going out daily, a lot. daily too. A lot. Yeah. Yep. So if you have a dog, you can use that for collecting the poop. <laughs> <laughs> Dogs come in handy. Well, you've given us lots of good ideas to do. Well, I hope so. I hope that I hope that uh, that I've got given you some ideas. We just all have to get off of our duffs and do it. And just, you know, one day just sit back and, and look and see how much plastic you actually use. Um, it's, not, it's not good. And I keep thinking I live a, live a pretty good life without much plastic, but then I go and I have my shampoo bottle, you know, it's plastic. So anyway, we're a plastic society and we gotta stop it. So anyway, thank you so much for inviting me. Yeah.